All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And you know what, Daniel? I just noticed my camera is just a little bit cockeyed. I'm going to say I can fix it. Straighten it out a little bit there. And, uh, you know, man, I have been looking forward to this because, well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Jeff Rogers because Jeff is who originally connected us. And Jeff connected you and I months ago. And in the interim, between him connecting us and saying, hey, you guys should do an interview for the podcast and stuff, a lot of stuff has happened. Uh, You have a new addition in your family. Uh, You got a new baby. And so how many many children in total do you have now, Daniel? We've got four now. The newborn is about two and a half months old, and our oldest is 13. So spanning spanning the ages now. Yeah, you and I are both have very full lives with uh, with families and stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you, it, it just keeps getting better. I mean, I've, I've got six children and uh, and or, or excuse me, seven children, six grandchildren. But we just found out two weekends ago that uh, in about seven more months, seven and a half months, we're going to have another grandchild. And awesome. Uh, Congrats. And so I'm pretty stoked. We're, we're, we're done having children, but we got more grandkids coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm with you. And uh, I have really been looking forward to uh, having this conversation with you. We, we've got, we, you and I have been able to jump on a few calls. I, I know I've been invited you to participate in one of the virtual roundtables that I've hosted and stuff and, and uh, get to know you a little bit. And I've been really looking forward to having this conversation with you and uh, and doing this interview. And so what I'd like to do is to start off, Daniel, is to just turn it over to you so that we can set a little bit of context and let the listeners know a little bit about, you know, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work you're doing and the impact you guys are making. And we'll just start there, Daniel. Yeah. So um, on the, I'll talk about the work and the life side because those always intertwine together. Yeah. Let me start with, with life and then I'll move in the work. Like you just hit on, we've got four kids, including the the addition. Kids are awesome. We love kids and that's a, a full part <laughs> of our life. Uh, I live in Walla Walla, Washington, tiny little wine country, and they should be giving me royalties because I try to promote the wine here all the time. Um, but we we love where we live. And one of the unique things I think about my life is that my um, in-laws live three doors down from me and my parents live three doors down from them. So this morning, my kids walked down to my parents to do the first part of their day doing homeschooling. And there's a good chance they'll stop at my in-laws on the way back, grab a snack, do some crafts, and then come back home and hang out and play. And so it's a really rich part of life. And I think that's important because when I think about the work we do with our clients in um, developing leaders to grow their organization, um, there's something that they're building that we are partnering to help them build. And that thing we're helping them build also has a connection to the life that they're building as well. And so we want people to build a great business and a great leadership team to drive that business, but also life for them and for the people around them. And so for us, that starts back at home for us. Um, yeah. And it's been just a really rich season to have that all together for us in our in our family ecosystem that supports my, uh, my work. Um, and um, my work is with Wild Leaders. And Wild is an organization that really is the first company to create this link between the purpose of the individual and the vision and operational performance of their company. And so our trust platform um, helps clients to, with their people, meet the moment they're in and make a bridge to the company that they are becoming. But so often people just take a job for their career. They don't often take a role that has a meaningful purpose that connects their personal purpose to a bigger purpose with a group of people often called an organization. Um, And that's what we do. We get to help solve that that problem. And in doing so, help those businesses grow and 
go to their next level. And trust is the invisible quality that makes or breaks that performance. The thing that can unleash, block, or unlock that performance we've we found is the invisible quality of trust. And if we can move the invisible stuff, it tends to move all the visible stuff as well in our work and in our personal lives. So that's a snapshot of um, my life and work today. Wow. You know, and and trust, I will, you know, it's interesting because in doing what I do and, and, and the the more that I lean into this and, and, and into this role of being the conduit of trust for the people that I serve, um, I have, you know, I, I, the more successful that an entrepreneur becomes, in, in, at least in my experience of having conversations with so many entrepreneurs over the last two decades, the, the more successful they get, the smaller their circle of trust seems to become of, of people that they can truly trust and confide in. And um, th- that trust, you know, and what, you know, I, I know I've talked about this before is that, you know, that, that those two trust, trust in both character and trust in competence. When those two trusts are in place and just present, it, it'll, it eliminates all friction. There is no friction when those two trusts are present. It's always the friction or the lack of trust that slows stuff down. But when trust is present, when trust in character and competence are present, then there is no friction and stuff just happens. And, it, and it, it happens quickly. It happens easily. It happens in flow. And um, it, it's pretty cool to help facilitate that, <laughs> which yeah. is kind of what you guys do. <laughs> and it's interesting too, because, you know, if I take that, I, and I, I that definition fits with how we look at trust as well. I'd even almost add on, on top of that, because that, that talks about the trust with the relationship, right? Like I I uh, I trust the person's let's say my manager or or the executive I'm working with their character and competence, and we found that on, in our research that there's two other pieces that help round it out. One is, do I trust myself? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean in that in a you know some sort of weird wonky self reliance. It's all on me sort of way. But in in a in a baseline, do I have confidence? Do I know who I am? And I have confidence in my own character and competence. Yeah. And some yeah. leaders, others see in them what they don't see in themselves yet, especially absolutely uh, emerging leaders. And so for a lot of times, whether it's um, for the employees in the company or for leaders who are rising up, can we help them have that 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 confidence and trust in who they are and their own competence and character? Um can we extend that to the relationships? So like, like you said, friction is reduced and things move, but there's another interesting thing too. And this is where it all comes together is, um, do I actually trust the direction of the business, the vision, the mission, the strategy. And we've seen a couple examples recently, you know, it's almost like this fine line, uh, walking the tightrope on the one hand, you can have a great business, business strategy, direction, vision, and the interpersonal trust that you just described is not there. And so it never gets actualized. Yeah. Yeah. On the yeah. other hand, we've seen recently a few businesses where they actually have great relationships. They've built a culture of trust interpersonally. They would even describe themselves as a family and, mm-hmm. and they, they connect outside of work. And, and yet some of those organizations we've seen that might have that in place, they've focused so much on that part to the neglect of that business strategy and direction that they start to lose people and they wonder, why are my why are my best people leaving? Like, we've got great relationships. They love us. They say they love the culture. They say they're not leaving because of the culture. And ultimately, they won't say this, but those people don't trust the direction of the business. Mm-hmm. And they don't trust the vision or the ability. So it might be, I trust you as my leader, but I don't trust where we're going. And so we've, we found rounding that out with how do I help the person trust themselves, have that self-confidence, that ability to know that they have what it takes 
And then build on top of that, that relational trust, that culture of trust where people reduce friction and get stuff done. But then how does a leader build that next level of trust where the people believe in the direction, the, the vision, the mission, and the actual plan, AKA strategy, the way we're going to get there. So they can see that connection between themselves, the people, and what they're going to be becoming together. And that piece if that interpersonal trust is in place, then becomes a rocket ship when we bring all those things together. So I, I guarantee you right now, you've probably got some entrepreneurs listening to this and now you're like, man, you really got them thinking now. <laughs> so, and so yes, as always, I'll make sure at the end that Daniel shares like info on how to follow up with him because I, I can see I mean, my my wheels are already turning. I, I know we got other people's wheels turning too and stuff, you know. And so, okay. So now that we've set a little bit of context here and stuff, and people have an idea of, of who you are and what your skill sets are and what you're all about and what inspires you, I'm gonna switch gears and I'm gonna I'm gonna reiterate the question for the benefit of our listeners. So have you ever been introduced to a person or persons who completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And Daniel, I'm just really excited to dig into this with you a little bit and and hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationships. You know, Kevin, it's such a great question and it's so difficult for me to answer because um, I had a coworker once tell me, this is very early in my career, right after school, and she was um, towards the end of her career. And she said, you know, Daniel, you collect mentors like kids collect baseball cards. And I kind of laughed and I realized I, I learned so much. I gained so much from relationships. And so the story that comes to mind immediately is about six years ago, it was one of my very first uh, offsites. I was leading for a client of Wilds and it was a, a really difficult offsite. It was a company that a global company that flew people from around the world and they were at an inflection point. If they didn't get things together and get people on the same page to build that bridge of trust, they were not going to be able to marshal their efforts to get their next round of funding and the company was going to go away. Um, So it was a pretty, it was a pretty critical moment. They needed somebody to facilitate that trusting conversation and it just exhausted me. So after two days, I mean, it was a great offside, but it, you know, it totally, totally took all my energy at the very end, a gentleman walked in and he walked in, Kevin, you've seen this before. He walked in like he owned the room and he had not been in the offsite over the last two days. And so this guy walks in like he owns the room, shaking people's hands. People clearly know him. I don't know who he is. He came up to me and he said, were you the facilitator for this offsite? I said, yeah. And he said, well, that's good. I've heard it went, um, heard it went really well. I said, that's Thanks for that compliment. It turns out he's the chair of their board. So he did walk in like he owned the room because he kind of did. Um, <laughs> but so we just struck up a conversation and it could be Kevin because I was so tired that um, I had a little bit lower filter. So he asked me a question that I've been asked often and less so over time, but, but as I get a little older, but it wasn't really a question. He looked at me and he said, you know, um, you seem pretty young to be doing what you're doing. And I expected someone quite a bit older to be facilitating this offsite. So I'm a little surprised. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, who has invested in you, in your development as a leader, to be able to give you the position to be able to lead an offsite like this and for me to get the type of report that I did? And and Kevin, I've had plenty of, of, uh, over the years, things that have been a hit and a miss. So it, I, I, you know, but this one, it was a great offsite. And it, it just came out of my mouth. I didn't even have to think about it. I just blurted, blurted it out. I said, you know, over the years, I have had dozens of people disproportionately invest in me. And it's because of them that I've been able to build the particular skill set to lead an offsite like this 
today. And he chuckled. He goes, good answer. And he gave me his card and said, let me know if I can ever help you. And I turned away and I, I kind of chuckled to myself. I laughed uh, one because I don't normally have a great pithy comeback. Right. So I thought, Oh, that was a nice zinger. But then I actually, on a more deeper reflection, I started thinking, you know, it really is because of those types of people that I've been able to have people take me around and observe off sites like this and see the examples and have people invest in me and give me that feedback and the experiences. And um, there are so many people who have altered the course of my career or business that I almost can't give credit to all of them. In fact, the you see all these books behind me. One of the common questions I get asked, Kevin, is, have you read all those books? Uh -huh. And my real answer is I have read a lot of them. Many of them I haven't read fully, but I try to keep books that either, either have made a substantial impact on me or that have made a substantial impact on someone who's made a substantial impact on me. So it could okay. be one of those mentors who has said, this book changed my life. I want you to read it. And so I might have read that book or a key piece they've mentioned, and I hold on to it because it represents a key lesson that they learned that they imparted to me. And so, you know, I mean, I can I can name a handful of people. One of them is the CEO at Wild Leaders, um, who has uh, at one point a friend of mine called him my career fairy because he had been a professor of mine in grad school. Did you say career fairy? My career fairy. You heard me. <laughs> He'd been a professor of mine in my um, in my master's degree, and um, one day we bumped into each other in the gym, and he convinced me to do a PhD, which is a whole story. And then years later, I bumped into him on an airplane on the way to a conference, and he convinced me to join Wild Leaders as it was just taking off and gaining momentum, which was about six years ago this month. Okay. Um, okay. And so I, you know, I can think of somebody like that who had these key. key moments that there's a pivot point and I did a PhD. There's a pivot point and I joined this business. Um, or I could think of key people who have uh, helped me think through different aspects of my professional and career development or, or been there for key conversations like Jeff Rogers when I'm making a career change and wondering what direction I should go and being able to sit with him and, and have a meaningful conversation to give me some uh, clarity or people like my father-in-law who I've referred to for years as the executive in my back pocket, who I could call in the middle of a negotiation and say, Eric, what would you do here? And I've got, you know, years of wisdom to be able to, to tap into. Um, so I, I could go on and on yeah. Kevin, but there's so many people that I can imagine, wow, this person has changed the trajectory of my life. Last story um, I'll share, I'll, I'll, I'll pause here at wild. One of the, the sets of tools we use in our, um, uh, trust platform is a series of assessments. And one of the assessments is, um, called the strategic network, um, audit. Okay. And what it does is it gives you the chance to in real time, digitally build your personal board of advisors identify who's on that board of advisors, what they bring to you and how, how fulfilled you are in that. What's the purpose they serve and what's the action you need to take from them. It's a great tool. A lot of people love it. And I, I used this tool before I joined wild. Um, Rob had said, Dr. McKenna said, Hey, if you're going to join the team, take a peek at some of our tools. And so I completed this, this tool. And there's a question in the suite of assessments, Kevin, that said, do you have the strategic network in place to take a calculated risk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I answer that question and I've reflected on that question over the years, multiple times, just as part of our using the process for myself, I've realized, you know, I mentioned just a handful of names right now, but I, that same list of people that gave me the confidence and credibility to step into that offsite is also the same list of people that I know when I'm considering a calculated risk, because life is about risk and opportunity. So when I'm taking a calculated risk, not a foolish risk, they're the same people who would make me say, yes, I can take that calculated risk because I have that strategic network of support. So um, it's almost so many people, I, I struggle to pick a name, Kevin. It's been my secret sauce. Yeah. 
and 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 that's not a bad thing. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, when I first started this podcast about two and a half years ago, my 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 initial vision was. I am going to interview my guests and have each one of them talk about and honor their one most valuable relationship. <laughs> that was my vision. By, by, by the fourth interview, that vision completely changed because I, you know, the first handful, probably 10, 20 interviews I did were all friends of mine, entrepreneurs that I'd known for a long time. And, uh, and uh, the, the guy that I was interviewing was like, are you serious, Kevin? Do you really expect me to narrow this down to one person? And I'm like, well, I guess not. <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, ever since then, uh, I'm just like, you know what? There is no right or wrong answer to this. There is whatever feels right. And like you and I had this conversation before we hit the record button, you know, that that my goal is, I, I just simply want to use this conversation so that we can make our biggest impact on whoever ends up getting to listen to this and stuff. And there is no right or wrong. And, you know, what, what's beautiful about this is that, you know, I, I, I'm like you. There are so many people in my life that have been so instrumental. And, and you, you mentioned, you know, uh, people – and mentors specifically seeing things in us that we might not be able to see ourselves. And I, I had one of those guys, his name was Jesse and it was in 2013. So 11 years ago, he was just, we were having a conversation. He was telling me some of the stuff that he saw in me and that like, Kevin, you are the most, amazing person I've ever seen as far as facilitating relationships and how when you interact with people that it's like, you know, he's like a lot of times, you know, and we were at a live event and we had been there for three days at a live event. He's like, you know, when I watch other people interact and having conversations with each other, it's like one person is talking, but the other person is not fully engaged. In fact, they might even be looking around the room for who else they can find to talk to because they just even went out of the conversation. But yet every time I saw you talking with anybody over the last three days, both of you were hundred percent engaged in the conversation. And he's like, Kevin, he's like, you have a gift. And he saw it back then it took, and, and I heard what he was saying. And, and I had been working with him for about, well, that was in probably spring of 2013. So I probably have been working with him for about five months. He, you know, he was a mentor of mine. And, and as we were sitting there at lunch and he's sharing this with me, I was like, yeah, I said, Jesse, I said, you know what? It's like, I, I really like this, the new me. And he starts chuckling and he's like, Kev, he's like, this isn't the new you. He's like, this is the real you. And you know, I heard that, and yet it, it took some time for it to, like, sink in and for me to really, you know, and, and, and it really didn't start unfolding for about four more years. I mean, we made some progress, but in 2017, that's when stuff started taking off. That's when stuff started clicking. That's when I started seeing what he, I said, oh, now I see, and I can own this now, you know. And, but until we do own that, like you're talking about, until we just own that and we, and like you said, like we have that trust in ourselves and who we are and like, yep, that is me. And I know that a hundred percent and look at all of this proof around me. Oh. And like anytime I'm thinking now, like, oh, Kev, you ain't all that or what? No, look at all this. Look at this. This. And yes, you are. You we are. need the, we need those people to help bolster that confidence in ourselves. And Absolutely. I would often describe those relationships. Some relationships are like a mirror and some relationships are like a window or even a telescope in a okay. window. And the mirror is important because it helps you see how you truly are. And that could be unpl an unpleasant reminder that you needed to see. Oops, mm -hmm. I didn't realize I had spinach in my teeth. I'm so glad somebody cared enough to tell me. Or... It could be, 
Ah, oh, I see. You wanted me to see what I actually am and that I can do it. And some people are also like an, a, 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 that that window or the telescope. If you ever okay. sit in a coffee shop or uh, in a spot with a big window and you've got a lounge chair and you look out a window and your gaze gets carried off into the distance and maybe there's a view of the mountains or the water. Um, and maybe even there's an opportunity to look at the binoculars and the telescope and you see something far away, right? Some people are like that. They help, they help us. We need to see how we truly are, good and bad. Mm -hmm. But we also need to see possibilities that we didn't imagine were possible with the journey we can take. And so, yeah, we need those people around us. Um, and it's a gift to them because there's nothing more value. You and I have talked about giving and receiving. There's no nothing more meaningful for somebody than to know that they made an impact in a person's life. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, I know you shared the example of the on-site. And what, what's another example of a situation where you got to make a really substantial impact and you know hands down that would have never happened if not for your relationship with whoever that was you know um what comes to mind immediately is i used to work in a university and okay. helped run a super intensive one-year graduate program and so we would take people in and we would tell them this is going to be more like work and less like school was, was our, was our pitch. Um, Jeff's daughter was actually one student in my cohorts. So, uh, I knew oh, Jeff okay. before then, but I, I grew closer with him through that. Um, and over the year we got to, I got, we got to, and I got to invest so deeply in a group of students and launch them off. I remember I had one student tell me, um, right before he graduated, he said, we, we had an alumni event and we had all the alumni come back and share stories with each other and connect. And he said, he came to me, he said, Daniel, you have made more impact um, on more people than most people will do over their lives. Wow. And wow. I still have students I'll talk to today who will, you know, you don't keep in touch with everybody. Life moves. Um, but I'm still in touch with people who would say, yeah, you made a pivotal impact in my life at that moment to help build me up and help me get launched into a career. And those are, um, I've had some incredible jobs and incredible experiences. I've been spoiled, Kevin, to have jobs where I regularly hear some people say, you've made a tremendous impact on me. Um, and that experience is one of the richest, the, the depth we went with those students. I will always look back at those five years and, and, um, and say, wow, we really changed some lives there. So yeah. that's what comes to yeah. my mind. Wow. That's powerful. And you know, that, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we live for is just knowing that like, you know what, we're making an impact. We're making a difference, you know, and, uh, that's huge. That's huge. Well, for anybody that's listening to this, going, man, Kev, I really like Daniel. I've appreciated some of the stuff he shared. He's left some open loops for me. I'd like to find out more about him and, and, and the work that they do. Uh, any resources, any websites that we can share with people and include with the show notes with the podcast, Daniel? Yeah, they can go right to our website at wild, wildleaders.org, wildleaders.com. Um, and get to experience, start following our content. We put out really great content all the time that's value added. And so it's a great way for them to engage with us and start their own trust journey with themselves, the people around them, and then ultimately to extend the trust of the organization that they're, that they're serving to connect the dots, um, for them and the people around them. That's a great starting point. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you, you know, my, my goal for this podcast has always been, you know, for, for guests like yourself to just be able to give you the opportunity to share your story, your experience around this topic of relationships. And then for the listeners uh, to be able to use these conversations to just inspire them 
to place an intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own lives. And, and Daniel, with your help, uh, we definitely delivered on that today. So thank you for that. And any last thing you feel led to share before we call it a wrap? You know, I mean, at the end of the day, relationships are what it's all, all about. Yeah. And so I will, I will often say um, people are the purpose. And so if we're doing any work anywhere, it's ultimately touching people in some way. And so being able to sharpen our relationships and relationship building is always a worthwhile endeavor. And so I hope that through this podcast and the rest of your podcast that your listeners are able to, to do that. Um, yeah. That's what it's all about, the relationships. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Well, Daniel, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate you. And I am excited to get this out there and share it with a lot of other entrepreneurs. So thank you again. You got it.